My name is Teresa Bakovnak. I am the president of Democrats for Life of America, and I am pleased to join you this evening as your host for this special event. I'm hopeful for three reasons. The first one is that public opinion on our side is actually on our side. Um, a poll came out just yesterday, which says that 78% of Democrats agree that laws can protect mothers and unborn children. So most Democrats actually reject the kind of extreme abortion laws that our leadership is promoting. The second reason is that pro-life Democrats are actually winning in elected races. In November, we endorsed 120 candidates, which was a record for us as an organization, and 80 of them won, which was, again, a record. So we're super excited about that. And they won in spite of the fact that every time in every race they were outspent by the abortion lobby trying to bring them down. And the third reason is that I'm really excited about the whole life message which we bring to America. We don't just take a stance on pre-born life. We care about climate change and racial justice. And Teresa, this is a message which uh, resonates with the whole the whole of this continent. It, it resonates especially with, with young people. And we've been tremendously excited by the enthusiasm that we are seeing from millennials in particular and Gen Z people. I know personally, I couldn't have really imagined the reach and the drive that Democrats for Life has before I, you know, found out about it, because being a pro-life Democrat seemed a little lonely and like you're fighting battles on both sides from, you know, pro-life conservatives and pro-choice Democrats. But when I began working with Democrats for Life, especially with beginning the young pro-life Democrats team, this completely changed. Now I know dozens of pro-life Democrats who are so dedicated to fighting against this, you know, political dichotomy on abortion in our parties and thousands who have been like enfranchised just as I was by the efforts of Democrats for Life. And this is only growing with young pro-life Democrats. With this very eventful program, the time has come to introduce our keynote speaker, the First Lady of Louisiana, First Lady Donna Edwards. You know, supporting children, women, and families sums up pretty much my mission as the First Lady of Louisiana. It's something that I take very seriously, and all my initiatives are centered around that one goal. As I have said many times before, when women do better, children do better, families do better, and so do our community, states, and our nation. You know, as the Bible teaches us in Luke 12, 48, to whom much is given, much is required. And I have been given a wonderful gift to use my voice to speak for the voiceless and to raise awareness about important issues to help others. And that is exactly why both John Bell and I strive to do every day as parents to our own children and for the great people of our state whom we are blessed to serve. Well, we have come to the portion of our event now where we are going to give out some awards. Are we ready to give out some awards or what? Well, absolutely. So great to be here. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming. We have a, uh, a couple of awards uh, to give out tonight. But first, on behalf of the board, we just want to say we would not be here without all of you. So we are grateful for, for everyone here tonight. But there's a couple of people uh, we want to give a special shout out to. So we'll, go, we'll start with our Volunteer of the Year Award. And this is going to go to David Donofrio. Uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to know David over the last year. David is an elected Democrat. He serves as an elected school board member in, in Ohio. Uh, he's running for re-election this year, and Democrats for Life probably stands behind him. He's also been very involved in the uh, creation of our in uh, leadership of our Ohio State chapter, which has gone back up and going. Thank you so much, Matt and Teresa and Kristen and Xavier and everyone else uh, in this call. It, this, this is a true, true honor. Um, and I encourage everybody watching this. 96% of elected offices in the United States are at the local level. And these are quite possibly the, um, you know, much more approachable for us to do. Uh, they are affordable and they are ones where our manpower can make a lot of difference to help you. So... I'm going to make a quick little pitch here. If any of you are interested or have ever even thought about running for office, here's the website, runprolife.org. So our next is our state chapter of the year. So a lot of you are involved in our, I know we have a lot of our state chapter members here. and We've uh, spent a lot of time across the country building up our state chapters and we're 
continuing to push forward for that in 2021. Uh, but one chapter in particular, we want to give a special shout out to, and that's our, uh, that's our uh, chapter in Colorado. And uh, I can tell you that the pro-life community and the broader Colorado community is, knows about Democrats for Life now and respects us and seeks us out and, in ways that they hadn't before. So it's, it's, it's my pleasure to serve as a chapter lead here in Colorado. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys so much. It's been so awesome. I've I've traveled around the country with Teresa and Kristen this past year and um, so much work into 115. They came out here and put on a rally and we've had thousands of volunteers across the state from so many different organizations that helped with Prop 115, but we're not done in Colorado. So we're gonna keep going. All right, Teresa, we got uh, one more award to give out tonight, and that's for our State Legislator of the Year. Representative Hatton, congratulations, and thanks for being here. Thank you so much for giving me this award. I'm, 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 uh, I'm honored, um, and I tell you, I am inspired by every member of this organization that I've encountered so far. I'm a proud Christian, and I'm a Democrat. And since I joined this group, I, I don't feel like that's an endangered species. I think we need that message about unity and togetherness also in our party. I think that Democrats have traditionally been the big tent party, the party that has um, acceptance for everyone and tolerance, mm -hmm. but we've become intolerant for the more conservative edges of our party. And, you know, everywhere I go, I talk to Democrats about how there are different shades of blue, you know, I, I'm a, a nearly purple shade of blue in, in my district and, and with my upbringing. And I couldn't be a stronger Democrat, though. I feel so strongly in our, our message and, and our policies. And, and I think that by accepting that, you know, pro-life candidates can win and by this organization and the, the members of this organization supporting one another, we can change the country, we can protect the unborn, and we can also see that Democrat policies can be um, uh, at the forefront of changing America into the kind of America that we want. That's why we need Democrats and we need pro-life Democrats. That's why I am so proud to be part of this organization, to meet all of you, and why I am looking so forward to working with you guys to change the narrative and to make all of our little voices one big voice that gets some attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Humanity. When I think about how we can solve this crisis, I'm reminded of the words that were printed in the Stanford Social Innovation Review. And I quote, no single organization is responsible for any major social problem, nor can any single organization cure it. Large scale social change requires broad cross sector coordination, end quote. When we think about those words, we recognize that we all have some share in the responsibility for this problem, all of us, and we all bear responsibility for solving this crisis of the devaluing of human life together. No single politician can cure it. No single organization can cure it. And we know that no single political party can cure it. We must all work together, cross-sector coordination, to solve these great challenges that threaten not only our future, but the future for our children and for our grandchildren. I was struck the blog post the Democrats for Life posted recently where they said, and I fully agree with this, the greatest fear of the abortion lobby isn't Republicans, it's pro-life Democrats. It's you, you are uniquely positioned to shift the direction of one of America's major political parties. You are positioned to work in collaboration with people of faith, of conscience, convicted to protect and respect human life. And in so doing, you are going to help to save millions of lives. And you are going to shift the very course of American history so that we can become a nation that loves, respects, and protects every member of our human family. 
surprise, I am the musical guest. You probably saw that coming, but just in case, I'm hoping some of you are surprised. This is a, an original song that I wrote intended to be kind of like a pro-life anthem to bring people together on the life issue from across the political spectrum. A better world is possible and it starts with us. We can end the suffering. We can give it up. Every generation has an obligation to nonviolence and non discrimination. And to know it's true, the unborn matter too. So join us and unite, for we have just begun to fight. Help us tell the nation, we want a whole life revolution. Help us tell the nation, we want a whole life revolution. 